activating the creative power in the world. That's what I'm sharing with you prophetically this morning. It's there. How do I activate it? Lift up those hands. Receive the spirit of understanding. Receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. Now lift up those two hands and begin to receive upon your life the spirit of wisdom and understanding in the knowledge of Him. In Jesus precious name. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. That may be true of the stories of many. Without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. But the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Mm. And as the Spirit of God began to move upon the waters, the Word of God, God said, Let there be light. And inside what God said was enough power to bring to pass what God demanded. Let there be light. For every darkness hovering around your destiny. By the same creative world that created light out of darkness. I decree that light be created you now. And God said. Verse 6, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God said, verse 9, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God said, verse 11, and God said, verse 14, And God said, verse 20, And God created great ways, 21, And God said, 24, And God said, 26, And God said, 29, And verse 31, And God saw everything. God said, God said, and God saw everything. Inside what God said was a creative force. God's word is loaded with a creative force. Inside the word is a creative power. God said, God said, God said, and I am the Lord. I change not. If God said, I am the Lord, that He led thee, only what I cannot heal is permitted to remain. Only what God cannot heal is permitted to remain as a disease in your body. Everything God said, God saw. Everything God said, God saw. Everything God said, God saw. Whatever He says to you today is not only God that we see, it, everyone around you will see. It. Activating the creative power of the Word of God. God's Word. It's not just for information. God's word is designed for your transformation. As we behold him, we are changed from glory to glory as by the spirit of the Lord. 
God's word is not just for your information. God's word is designed for your transformation. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. As we behold him as in the glass with an open face, we are changed from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. Everything God said, God saw. And he said, I am the Lord, I change not. In John chapter 1, we are all familiar with that scripture. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Creation came to light by the Word of God. Creation terminated the frustration that was upon the face of the earth. Creation brought an end to the void, the shapelessness, the emptiness of the earth. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. So that book carries life. It's a life book. It's a life emitting, life transmitting book. The words that I've spoken to you, they are spirit and they are life. John 6, 63. The letter kill it, it is the spirit that gives it life. The words that I've spoken to you, they are spirit and they are life. John 6, 63. So that is a life bank. It's life emitting, life transmitting, and life transforming. It's not a storybook. It's a mystery book. And unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. It's not a storybook, it's a mystery book. And it is that mystery that gives you mastery over the affairs of life. And they call the mystery here the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. The mystery of the kingdom of heaven. This is the mystery that gives you your place in the kingdom of God. This is the mystery that puts you in charge. On the earth. Inside this book is life. Accessible by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Opening you up to the mysteries of the kingdom. Giving you mastery over the affairs of life. Inside this book. It's life. This life is accessible by the ministry of the Spirit of God. And that mystery to which you gain access by the Spirit gives you mastery over the affairs of life. What is in the world? The wisdom of God is in the world. And God's wisdom is creative wisdom. How many of you agree that God's wisdom is creative wisdom? In Psalm 104 and verse 24. How manifold are thy works, O God? In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. How manifold are thy works? These works are the direct products of your wisdom. See how it has lavishly enriched the earth. 
God's wisdom is creative wisdom. In Proverbs chapter 3 verse 19, The Lord by wisdom has founded the earth, and by understanding has he established the heavens. The Lord by wisdom created the earth, and by wisdom established the heavens. God's word is God's wisdom. And God's wisdom is creative in nature. God's wisdom is creative in nature. In Luke eleven forty nine, Jesus defined the word of God as wisdom. Verse 49. Therefore also said the wisdom of God. Luke eleven forty nine. Jesus speaking. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute. He was referring to the word of God as the wisdom of God. God's word is the wisdom of God. And the wisdom of God is creative in nature. When you do whatever that wisdom dictates, God is committed to create its content. Hello. <laughs> when you do whatever that wisdom dictates, God is committed to create its content. <laughs> when you do whatever that wisdom dictates, God is committed to create its content. When you do, <laughs> whatever that wisdom dictates, that wisdom is largely instructional. Come and say instructional. <laughs> Mary said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And what is lacking will be created. And he told them to do some similar stupid things. And as they did the similar stupid things that that wisdom dictated, the wine that was wanting to them was created. Has God changed? My God will never change. Has God changed? My God will never change. He will never change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Has God changed? My God will never change. It's so interesting to understand God. We cry too much. Our cry is rooted in ignorance. You can't align with what that wisdom dictates and not find yourself in the creative realms of the acts of God. Ah. Ah. That wisdom said, if you murmur, I'll kill you. How can somebody, something be paining you and you can't complain? That wisdom forbids complaints. Every complainer ends up a convict. They don't complain. That wisdom forbids complaining. When you give in to complaints, you end up a convict. He said, in everything, give thanks. It's a very stupid order, but you must comply. Very stupid order. You know how many people have complained even this morning? He said, these things are written for your example to understand the wisdom of God. They that murmured in the wilderness were destroyed. When you complain, here, they listen to you. You use complaint to gain attention. But when you complain on the other side, you gain destruction. You gain what? <laughs> uh-huh. You see, it's not common sense anymore. Is that common sense? Common sense must complain about what you are not happy with. 
But divine sense is against complaint. Complaint leads to destruction. We are asked on this side, complaint grants attention. He said, whosoever hear this word of mine and do at them, I like him unto a wise man. So, you tap into that wisdom by doing what the word says by following the instructions detailed out in scriptures. And then what is lacking gets created. What's in the word of God? The wisdom of God, the creative wisdom of God is in the word. The creative wisdom of God is in the word of God. And you tap into it by being committed to the demands of the scriptures in faith. In faith. And when you are committed, God is compelled to act. Because the scriptures cannot be broken. God cannot deny himself. So obedience of faith provokes the creative power of the word. It provokes the release of the creative power of the word of God. In chapter 3 of Proverbs and verse 13, down straight to 19. It tells us what kind of thing this wisdom creates. And I'm sure some, many of us will be excited as we see it. What does this wisdom create? Proverbs chapter 3, and beginning from verse 13. What does this wisdom create? Happy is the man that finds that wisdom and the man that gets that understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof that find gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things that thou canst de desire are not to be compared unto her. Now verse 16. Length of days. Hello? Length of days is in our right hand. So it creates longevity. Come and say longevity. Length of days. How? It tells you how to remain buoyant in your health. And how do you retain Buoyancy in your health. A merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Therefore, rejoice in the Lord always, and I say again, rejoice. Rejoice evermore. Neither be ye sorry for yourself, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And the greatest determining factor for longevity is strength. Three score and ten are your years. But by reason of strength, it can become four score, five score, six score, seven score. And where is strength coming from? Rejoice in the Lord. And again I say, rejoice! So every depressed person is cutting down on his lifespan. He doesn't know. Every day they say, sorry, oh. I say, yes, sorry, yes, yes. You are reducing one one day from so, no. Ask my office people, everyone that calls me on the line, I must get a smile from you. Them, uh, you must smile. I must make sure I contaminate you with it. Amen. For every, anything I teach that there is no smile in it, don't buy the tape. Anyone. Because I know what it takes to prolong my days. Now, 
let me tell you something. I'm stronger physically than when this ministry started. Well, don't let there be a fight between me and you. If I give you a knock, <laughs> don't, don't let there be a fight between me and you. <laughs> now you see, now you see, the fact is that I'm stronger today than I was when this ministry began. I've not had the first depressed day that they say, hey, what's happening? It's me who asked them, what's happening to you? That's how long days. It's not by prayer. Oh God, I must live long. Mm, you must do what guarantees long life. Now, you have fought this morning. You are going to fight after service again. Now, how will you have length of days? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> They say line up to enter the bus. No way. I'm not going to line up. Then you stop. Move here, please, and say, No, I can't move. You see, the moment you give in to depression, you are cutting down on your lifespan. Don't you see God's wisdom? Because the joy of the Lord is the secret of your strength. The spirit of a man we sustain his infirmity, but a broken spirit, who can be here? Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 14. When your spirit is broken, your body will soon give in, will soon cave in. I cause every spirit of depression around your life today in the name of Jesus. said, length of this in our right hand, and in our left hand, what? Riches and what? Honor. So God's wisdom creates wealth. Creates what? God's wisdom creates wealth. God's wisdom creates wealth. So it is word practice that culminates in a wealthy life. <laughs> it is not human connection. It's not governmental connection. It is word practice that enhances your material worth. Come and say material worth. Word practice. God's wisdom creates worth. God had blessed Abraham in everything. But Abraham paid the tithe of everything. And then God blessed him in everything. So, oh God, every devil that won't let me prosper. There is no devil here now. <laughs> the scriptures cannot be broken. You can hire fasting contractors. 40 people fasting for you. That won't add one dime of worth to your material life. God's wisdom guarantees long life. God's wisdom creates wealth. And wealth and honor, they go hand in hand anyway. Wealth that is righteously acquired. It is accompanied with honor. Any day, any time. Her ways are ways of pleasantness. That is pressure-free life. Pressure free life. <laughs> Why did he say in everything give thanks? For instance, what has happened is what you know. What will have happened you didn't know. You lost one thing. You are to lose everything the same day. He said, You better know it is because I'm in charge that it is just that level. If I were on break, you would not even be here. He knows what is in darkness. And everything lays bare before him. Pleasantness. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Because as long as there is breath, there is hope. I will wait. Because my change is coming. That's what allays the pressures 
Hallelujah. Forgetting about the things that are behind. Don't bury your destiny with the events of the past. Reach out to the things that are in front. Only those who look forward go forward. You can't be looking backward and be going forward. You are heading for an accident. So look forward. God's wisdom helps you to be free from pressures. To be what? Free from pressures. Though thy beginning be very small, thy later end shall yet greatly increase. He shows you. And all our parts are peace. Come and say peace. Those are the products and these products are not in the open market. Long life. Is there where they buy that one? Do you know the market where they buy long life? Riches plus honor. Not many people have that. The one that comes from God will be accompanied with honor. Pleasantness and peace. No bias. That is what this wisdom creates. Everything contrary to peace in your life. Because he is our peace. By his blood, he has made peace between us and God. My peace I live with thee. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth I, give I unto thee. Be ye not troubled, neither be ye dismayed. Everything contrary to peace in your life, I cause it today in the name of Jesus. What is in the word of God? The creative wisdom of God is loaded in his word. Chapter 4 verse 7. Proverbs 4 7. Wisdom is a principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all you're getting, do what? Get understanding. Exhort her and what will happen? And she shall promote thee. So God's wisdom creates promotion. Creates what? God's wisdom. That young man said, I don't know how to be pure. They just call me to it. God's wisdom creates promotion. Tapping into the nuggets on winning the war of life. The king sent for him. They will send for you shortly. <laughs> the king sent for him and lose him. I said, no, you won't be an ordinary staff anymore. God's wisdom creates divine promotion. Say, so shall promote thee, and what happens? And she shall bring thee unto honor when thou dost embrace her. It will promote you and bring you to honor. He shall give to thy head an ornament of grace, and a crown of glory shall she deliver unto thee. Now, you see, this is what this wisdom creates. I decree a divine access for everyone into this dimension of God's creative wisdom in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. What is in the word of God? Inside God's word lies God's wisdom. And God's wisdom is creative wisdom. And God's wisdom has unique products <laughs> most of which cannot be found anywhere else long life riches and honor pleasantness and peace divine promotions a crown of glory an ornament of grace beauty, color that's what that wisdom creates that is created for you in the name of Jesus Christ he said to Peter Launch hands on the deep. And Peter said, we have toyed all night and we have caught nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And then, the nets began to break. And then, the boats began to sink. And they beckoned on people, come on, help us here. Our emptiness has been turned into supernatural fullness. By operating the wisdom of God. That's what will happen to you in all areas of your life from today. 
I speak the creative forces of the word of God to begin to produce for you tearful testimonies beginning from now. Can I hear your believing amen if you are there? What is in the word of God? Inside the word of God lies the power of God. Come and say the power of God. Inside the word of God lies the power of God. We recognize that Jesus is the word of God personified. John chapter 1 and verse 1 to 11 clearly establishes that. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. No things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. And the word became flesh. And dwelt among us and we behold his glory. Now see, so Jesus is the word of God personified. Now in Luke chapter 8, beginning from verse 40 to 48, we saw the word of God moving on the streets of Galilee. And we saw the word of God loaded with virtue. And we saw a woman with the issue of blood cringing to find her way across to tap into the virtue that the word carries. And we saw her touch the hem of the garment of the loaded wall. And the world turned his back and said, Someone touched me. Someone drew something out of me. The word of God is the power bank of God. That's a graphic illustration. And when that woman tapped into that virtue, it enhanced her value. It creates her desire. God's word is the carrier of God's power. Just like mosquitoes carry malaria parasite, so the word of God carries the power of God. When that word stinks you, like mosquitoes stinks a man, power is transmitted and value is created. God's word is the carrier of God's power. You know what Paul said in Romans chapter 1 verse 16? I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. So God's word is a carrier of God's power. Inside God's word lies God's creative power. Inside God's word lies God's creative power. Inside God's word lies God's creative power. A woman sat in front in our old church and he heard me say, Your hands are miracle hands. He said, This I shall follow them that believe. You lay your hands upon the sick and they shall recover. So your hands are not just for carrying luggage and eating food and writing. Your hands are God-ordained miracle hands. That means you are not, uh, you are not marked out for sickness and disease. You are a deliverer of the sick. <laughs> you are sent to set them free. Inside you lies more virtue than you require. And when you lay hands, it flows out of you to others. The woman jumped from her seat went to see her child who had a growth on the forehead on the third floor of the children's facility in the old church laid her own hands on her own child and on the spot the growth on the forehead already slated for operation vanished God's word is a carrier of God's power so when that word enters you it empowers you to experience the creative act of God. In John chapter 1 verse 12. As many as received him. He gave power to become the sons of God. He gave power to become. So when the word is received within. It empowers to operate in the class of God. Hi. 
Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about this morning? Are you really hearing it? So every trouble around your life is now in trouble. Because you know what to do to bring down the mountains. And every mountain on your way must give way to you this week. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 17. Hear what he says. God's power is creative in nature. Hallelujah. Verse 17. Ha, Lord God. Behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by what? By thy great power and stretched out arm and there is nothing too hard for thee. Hear this. There is nothing too hard for the power of God. You have made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and by thy outstretched arm and there is nothing too hard for thee. He made the heavens and the earth by his great power. So God's power is creative. And you tap into that power by faith. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes. So it becomes power with faith. It is your faith that converts the word of God into the power of God. Your faith is what converts the word of God into the power of God. It is your faith that converts the word of God into the power of God. Your faith. As many as received him, John 1, 12, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to as many as believe on his name. So, the power is accessible by faith. The wisdom is accessible by obedience. When you do whatever he tells you to do, you commit him to create the content of what you have done. Very important. The Bible said in the house of Cornelius, as Peter was speaking, Acts of the Apostles chapter 10, Peter was in the house of Cornelius, as he was speaking, the Bible said, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that had the word. So inside the word is the power. The power landed on them from the word that was coming out of Peter's mouth. The power came out and rested on them. God's word is God's power bank, drawable by your faith. When the word is understood and faith comes alive, the written word becomes the happening word by the power of God. Can I hear your amen? Can I hear your amen? Yeah. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. It's very important. Very important. That's what happens with the word of God. Jesus was teaching and the Bible said the power of God was present to heal them. Luke 5.17 He was teaching and God's power was manifested. So inside God's word lies the power of God. I decree amazing encounters for you in this season of your visitation in the name of Jesus. So crucial, so important. What is in the word of God? And I'd like you to get ready because things are already happening to you where you are. I said things are already happening to you where you are. Things are already happening to you where you are. Do you know that there is someone here that today is the last day you will experience depression in your life? Today is the last day 
you will cow your hair in sorrow. By the wisdom of God, you will become smarter than all negative circumstances that may come near where you are. In the name of Jesus. What is in the word of God? Very important and very crucial. The word of God is the ultimate healing balm. Ultimate healing balm. Inside the word of God lies the healing virtues for humanity. Inside the word of God lies the healing virtue for all mankind. Inside the word of God lies the healing virtue for all mankind. One of those services, a man had a hole in the skull, a hole in the skull, and God's word was going forth. No hand was laid on him. The hole in the skull was filled. God's word is the ultimate healing remedy for mankind. Anything happens by the word of God. Anything happens via the word of God. He sent his word. And what happens? And the word healed them. And the word delivered them out of all their destructions. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word. And the word heals them. And the word delivers them out of all their destructions. Sets them free, liberated them. So you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free from HIV, from hepatitis, from lameness, from blindness. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Can I hear your loud amen? In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 22, he said, My son, attend unto my words and give ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they shall be life to them that find it and health to all their flesh. Is able to regenerate your kidneys, repackage your heart, Strengthen your bones. Heal your marrows. Set you upon your high places. It's able to do all of that. Shall be life to them that find it. And health to all their flesh. Life and health in the word of God. Life and health in the word of God. Life and health in the word of God. Pa Egan will say, then, for 61 years, he didn't know what headache means. It's now 69 years that he doesn't know the meaning of pain or ache. He shall be life to them that find it and health to all their flesh. So beware, lest any man spoil you through vain philosophy. After the rudiments of this world, after the traditions of men and not after Christ for ye are complete in him who is head of all principles and powers ye are complete in him there is nothing decorative on my family doctor there is nothing decorative there it is derogatory my family doctor just told me now that my body needs there is nothing you should live beyond that it's not a sin, but it's definitely a weight. It's not a sin, but you should not grow that. You should not grow that. And that's what the word of God does. I see every plague of sickness and disease on everyone's life destroyed by the power of God's word today. I'll read this very importantly. Job chapter 33. Wow. 
There is healing virtue flowing now. Everyone appointed to death is being set free now. All things were made by the word. So, the word can put right whatever has been destroyed by what was made. Whatever was made was made by the word. So the word of God is able to put right whatever may have been destroyed among what has been made. So with any part of your life that has been corrupted by disease, I decree by the power of the word of God, your deliverance now. Now look at chapter 33 verse 21. His flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen, and his bones that were not seen stick out. Yea, his soul draweth near unto the grave, and his life to the destroyers. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, <laughs> That means the deliverance of this man is tied to a divine message from the lips of an ordained interpreter. Someone that can interpret it correctly. If there were a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show unto man his uprightness, or his right his right to be free his right to be free if there were one to tell him that he has a right to be free then God will be gracious unto him and will say deliver him from going down to the pit I have found a ransom then his flesh shall be fresher than a child he shall return to the days of his youth Everyone that is near the grave, I have good news for you. If you are saved, the same day your soul was redeemed, your body was redeemed along with it. Whatever can stop your salvation, can stop your healing. Whatever can erase your name from the book of life cannot remove your name from the divine head package that God delivered for you. Therefore, be loosed in the name of Jesus. He himself took your infirmity. He himself took your infirmity. You carry them different kinds. Neck, pain, stomach, trouble, every kind. He himself took. Here you are carrying all manner of luggage. He took. He took. He took. He himself took all your infirmities and carried so you are clean. Everything that does not belong to you as an instrument has been taken away from you. He himself took, he took your typhoid fever. He took your tuberculosis. He took HIV from your body. He took kidney failure from you. Whatever you were carrying, the day you met Jesus, he said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Who delivereth thy soul from destruction? Who satisfied thy mouth with good things so that your days are renewed like the eagles? Every load of sickness and disease, I cast them in your life today. That's what Matthew 8, 17 is all about. Himself took, took, 
in all that is coming to take, he already took. He took it. He's not there. It takes a blind man to still see all this luggage on this lectern now. He's not there. So to, for anyone to convince you that these items are still on this, is playing on your blindness. It is not there. Now listen. If he took, then it can't be there. And let God be true and all men be liars. If he took, then it cannot be there. If he took, then it cannot be there. If he took, then it is not there. If it's not there, then I am free. Can I hear your triumphant amen there? Everything God said, God saw. Everything God said, God saw. I am the Lord that healed thee. By whose stripes you were healed. Past tense lost behind. You were. The, if only you can see, then you were healed. It's not a thing to struggle for. It's a thing already settled. I heard him say, Ye are bought with a price. Something was paid for your liberty. The debt was fully paid. Your freedom can no longer be contested. The debt has been fully paid. So your liberty can no more be contested. The debt that sin made you to owe to Satan has been fully paid. <laughs> it was sin that made you subject to the devil. Jesus came. He paid the price for the sin. So Satan has no more dominion over your life. <laughs> that means the spirit of infirmity can no more hold you back. Therefore, I decree your liberty in the name of Jesus. Everyone appointed to death be lost in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. The price has been fully paid. Therefore, your liberty can no more be contested. The price has been fully paid. When police arrest you because you are owing and somebody comes to pay, they don't care where the source of the money is from. As long as the debt for which you are ahead is paid, what happens? You go. So you are going today. I said you are going today. You are going today. Listen, this is a creative miracle ground. <laughs> One of us here came into church and as he was coming, I was on my way out to the airport. And she had six more days according to the doctor's prescription. She bolted out of the hospital because she had brain tumor. And they said in six days, her face will be blown up. So she came And as I was going She said okay It's going but Lord you are here Took the x-ray and said God This is for you You can handle it Six days has not ended up till now I said six days has not ended up till now She is far more beautiful today Than she was before she was attacked Brain tumor went back to the sender by the creative power of God in this ground. Everything that they expected to happen in the negative for you, God's creative power is changing it in your favor for a testimony. It's changing it in your favor today for a testimony. It's changing it today in your favor for a testimony. It's changing it today in your favor for a testimony. 
if there is anything in your life that you know that only God can do, that everybody seems to have given up, even you yourself thought, would this ever be done? I'm glad to tell you as God's prophet, this is that day. I said, this is that day. I said, this is that day. Get your shoes off your feet where you are seated. This is a creative miracle ground. God sent me for the liberation of mankind in my generation. God sent me to you. God sent me to make known to you that your liberty can no longer be contested because the price has been fully paid. Listen to me. I like you to believe God. I didn't send myself. He sent me. He sent me. He sent me to liberate mankind from all oppressions of the devil through the preaching of the word of faith. He said, son of man, can these bones live? And I said, Lord, thou knowest. The thing that only God knows is the thing that will happen to you now. <laughs> and he said, prophesy to this bone, son of man. Prophesy. And he said, as I, and as I prophesied, there was a noise and a rattling. I'd like you to receive the prophet's anointing right now. I said, receive that prophetic anointing right now. He said, and as I prophesied, there was a noise and a rattling. And the bones came together. And as I beheld, flesh covered them and skin covered the flesh. <laughs> I prophesied. And all I need to do was just behold the happiness. You have struggled and all. Now you are going to begin to behold. You begin to see things happening. I said, you will begin to see things happening now. Now listen to me. Very important. Very important. God said, if you shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in your heart but shall believe that those things that you say shall come to pass. He said, you shall have whatsoever you say. And I heard from God whatever tree my heavenly father has not planted it shall be uprooted. And God saw everything and behold, it was very good. So whatever is not very good about your life, it is now your turn to approve them. I said, whatever cannot be said to be very good, it is only fear, but not very good. It's even bad. Far from being good. <laughs> it is now your turn to approve them. And whatever you cost today is cost forever. Whatever you buy today remains bound forever. And whatever you lose today remains loose forever. Now listen to me. This is a creative ground and you are all witnesses. Standing firmly by faith on this ground. Now begin to engage the creative word of God to uproot every tree that you know God has not planted and is growing in your life. Stand to your feet and begin to uproot them in the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Every tree Every tree.
Oh Jesus Every tree That you have not planted But growing in the lives Of this man and women I command That they be uprooted now In the name of Jesus Oh Jesus Silo, jate kete rute sizara, recto no porute size. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Jesus name Amen For every woman called barren This is your day of visitation <laughs> Hear what God said And God blessed them And God said Be fruitful And multiply and replenish the earth. And everything God said, God saw. Your case cannot be an exemption. Everything God said, God saw. So whatever appears barren in your life, begin to call forth supernatural fruitfulness by the creative word of God. Call it forth now. Every barren woman, every barren business, every barren career. God bless them. Call it forth. Call it forth. Call it forth. Call it forth. Today is your day of visitation. Call for your supernatural fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. By the word of God that says, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. I cause every plague of barrenness today in the name of Jesus. By the creative word of God that says, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. I cause every barrenness in every career and business in the name of Jesus. <laughs> By the creative word of God that says, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Every man and woman 
God barren today. I decree that in nine months time we will celebrate your miracle babies in your hand. In the name of Jesus. Every barren career, every barren business, I decree within the next three months we shall be celebrating your supernatural fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. Listen to this. Jesus before Jesus came, humanity was a victim of misfortune. But when Jesus came, he converted our misfortune to favor. Thou shalt have mercy upon the righteous with favor, with thou compass him around as with a shield. So righteousness entitles you to favor. So every form of disfavor and misfortune that is plaguing your destiny, I command it over today in the name of Jesus. He said, Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Oh, he said, thou will arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, yet the set time is come. I said to you as a prophet of God, the time to favor you has finally come. You have been struggling to get results from henceforth. You will no longer get any lamb by your own sword. The favor of God will establish your colorful destiny in a grand star. Begin to declare and proclaim prophetically your entitlement to divine favor. Go ahead and begin to say, I am entitled to divine favor. I walk in divine favor. Divine favor is my entitlement. By the redemption that I have in Christ, misfortune is no longer my portion. This favor is no longer my luggage. I am free. Lift up your voices. Declare a baptism of favor over your life. This week he declare a week of divine favor. week he is declared a week of divine favor this week is declared a week of divine favor I cause every plague of misfortune Jesus name this ground on which you stand swallows sicknesses and disease so every form of discomfort in your body begin to decree that it be swallowed up on this ground every form of disease every sickness begin to decree that they be swallowed up in victory be healed in your mind. Be healed 
in the organs of your body. Be healed in your body. Be healed in your spirit. In the precious name of Jesus. Can I hear your loud amen? Yeah. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, there may not be fruit in the vine, the fruit of the olive may fail. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And the creative forces of heaven will come into the play. He will make my feet like his feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places. <laughs> Everything dead about you will come out of the grave now. <laughs> Jesus said, Father, I thank you. And a little boy's lunch was more than enough to feed 5,000 men minus women and children. Every inadequacy in your life will be supernaturally supplied now. We are crushing the head of opposition. We are what? We are crushing the head of all oppositions. Whatever has no meaning in your life will take on a colorful meaning now. This week, Creative miracle jobs will be rushing at you. Every shut down business will reopen in a grand style. Every turbulence in every family will enjoy peace and tranquility. Every satanic hold on every destiny shall be shattered now. In the name of Jesus. Whatever is part and package of this commission from heaven that is lacking in your life today, I decree that as you go, it is supplied to you. Whatever testimony has ever happened by the hand of God under this commission, the kind that which is wanting in your life. I decree that your own be created to you now. You are standing on this breakthrough ground. This day marks the end of every form of breakdown in your life. The healing virtue packaged into this commission, I command it to be released into your life for your total health and longevity in the name of Jesus. The peace and serenity packaged into this commission that is lacking in your heart, lacking in your home, and lacking in your business and career. I decree it be created for you now. <laughs> to every storm in your family, I say peace. <laughs> to every storm in your business and career, I say peace. <laughs> to every storm in the life of your children, I say peace. <laughs> The favor of God that is over this commission. I command the same dimension of favor to be created for you now in the name of Jesus. And I decree that this day marks the end of all your struggles. Whatever came to you into this service as a sickness or disease, 
you are returning on Sunday with it as a testimony. That woman said she was supposed to see her period the following day. But by the anointing of that Sunday, the period never came. But now, the birth baby boy came. Whatever you used to see that depresses you, you will see them no more again forever. Avon attended this creative miracle service. Whatever is wanting within seven days, I see it created for you. No more harassment for you as you go. From today, no more harassment for you as you go. Robbers will no longer harass you. Witches and wizards will no longer harass you. Circumstances will no longer harass you. Because this is your year of visitation for dominion. Everything contrary to dominion, I command it to be trampled under your feet. It is done. 